Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Bill Spicer. On today's show, cold weather fly fishing. I'm with professional guy John Valk and he's going to instruct us exactly where these fish lay in the cold weather and how to refine our setup in order to take these fish. It's going to be a great show, so stay with us, we'll be right back. On today's show, the new Fly Fisher crew is in Gray County in the towns of Meaford and nine miles away the town of Thornberry. We start on the Big Head River in Meaford first. This river has always been one of my favorite rivers to fish. My very first fishing experience in my life was on this very river many years ago. We then move nine miles down the road to the Beaver River in the town of Thornbury. Joining me today is John Valk, owner of Grindstone Outfitters. John's an old friend of mine whom I consider one of the best guides and steelheaders in the country. John also considers these rivers his home waters and knows every spot intimately. What a beautiful day. Oh, it's lovely. Isn't this fantastic? Lovely. You know, big snowfall last night. Yeah. There's virtually no snow here up until last night. Yeah, I know. So, but it's it's, it's chilly. Oh, there was another hit. It's chilly, but uh, no wind, so I, I don't feel cold at all. No, not at all. And it's always so quiet with the snow, right? Yeah. The snow, de you know, deadens the sound everywhere. And I just love these conditions. And just pull that right back. Pull it back. Now drop your rod, drop down, drop down the line, tight line, perfect. Okay, so the control that you're asking me to do you is cast a little farther out than we want. Yeah. And then lift your rod really lift high, it up. quick, drop it into the seam. Drop it into the seam, <clears throat> and drop my tip. Yeah, a little bit faster, a little bit faster. You don't want to in impede the flow, of the natural flow of the indicator with the current. Okay, all right, so okay. I was a little bit slow there then. The water temperature's dropped off like a stone here. Yeah, so overnight. Yeah, we well. have to fish these really slow, really, really deep. Oh, that was a hit. Yeah, right in the pockets. Right okay. in the pocket there, yeah, that was a hit. Drop faster, Bill, faster. That's it, don't hold it back at all. Just let it run through. So a little frosty, Bill. I can tell by the color of your beard. <laughs> but mine's, let me forget that one, mine's right? not far behind you, buddy. <laughs> it wasn't white yesterday when I saw you, was no. it? No. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. Touch but I think if you hook a nice big steelhead, that beard will go back to black. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you remember when it was black, so. <laughs> the setup we are using today is a nymph setup with a nine foot leader tapered to a 4X fluorocarbon tippet with split shot placed 14 to 16 inches from the egg fly. We're also using a strike indicator placed two times the depth of the water from the fly. So if the water is four feet deep, we place the indicator at eight feet from the fly. This along with our split shot will constantly have to be altered as we move from different depths and faster currents. Now John, explain to the audience why we're upstream of the fish. So Simply because a lot of people say, why don't you, we can get a better drift? The water is so low and so clear right now. We've, you know, we've had dismal conditions this fall. We've been through a drought where we've just had a nice amount of precipitation right. just to bring this river up a little bit. So we're dealing with, with clarity though, Bill. And right. the reason why I want you to stay upstream while you're nymphing like this is to stay out of their line of sight these fish are going to be spooky, and they're also going to be lethargic because of this water temperature drop. Right. So the last thing we want to do is get in here and spook the fish. Right. So, so rather than do that, we'll work the pools from the upstream side. They don't get an opportunity to see us. They're underneath that broken water. Right. The first thing they're going to see, as long as we get the presentation right, is that little egg or the nymph that we're going to use yep. during the course of the day going across the bottom of the river. See that little dark hole over there? Yeah. Okay. And all we have to do, we don't have to, because we don't have a lot of room behind us, just a little flip of a roll cast, that's all it takes. Just open up a nice big loop, 
right? And you could actually cover just by a little bit of stack mending and yep. just throwing some slack line, you can cover all the water that now, you want to cover. Now, stack mending is when you just jiggled it and stacked it on top. Right? It's just one little mend after another. Yeah. And the mend doesn't have to be big. Mm -hmm. All it has to be, basically, pick your rod up high. A mend can be that small, right there. You right. see what I'm doing with the just rod little, tip? Yeah. Just yep. flipping around. Now I'm throwing them downstream mm -hmm. now. So you can really cover a lot of water. And the way we... That was a hit. The way we have this, that was a hit. <laughs> the way we have this nymphing rig set up is we're basically running in a small strike indicator. Mm -hmm. And even though that water is only maybe three feet deep in there, right? you can see the amount of length that we have between the strike indicator and the fly. Right. So with just that little bit of mending, keeping the rod high and holding that line back a little bit, we're allowing that full five feet of line leader underneath the indicator to, and the egg to go downstream before the indicator gets to the fish. Right. Okay? So you're really covering the bottom effectively. Okay? All right. Now, if you throw one more slack loop on that, obviously you'll know that you're covering the water deep enough because it'll go right to the bottom and hang right. up on you. Mm -hmm. So the whole key is just to hold it up slightly, a little bit of mending, and just allow it to run yep. naturally. All with you're the doing is current. jiggling and mending your line a little bit at a time. And that was another hit. Oh yeah, ooh! <laughs> Boy, that line is so heavy. Yeah. The ice build up <laughs> on there. It's, uh, it's almost hard to get a, get a hook set on them. Yeah, and that being a spongy rod too, so. Yeah, Yeah, but that's good, you know, in these conditions, Bill. Yeah. Especially when we're fishing light tippets like this. Yeah. Oh yeah, you won't break your tippets, that's for sure. That's almost a float, to float rod technology, right. right? Yeah. That's actually a spay rod. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, like a switch rod, right? Yeah. I guess the, the, the new rods out, they're calling them switch rods, yeah. where you can use them either or. Yeah. Probably, you know, the reason that you love these things so much, Bill, like if you trout fish, you walk to a river, not taking anything away from trout or bass or anything else yeah. for that matter, because they're all fantastic. But <clears throat> they are so unpredictable. Right. You know, you're fishing a dry fly on a stream, a trout comes up, grabs your fly, or you see a trout rise, you know to put a fly to it, as long as you match the hatch, you're gonna take that fish. Yeah. Right? Steelhead are a little bit different. Migratory, they're working up through a river. They're moving into these little soft little pockets, pools, runs, trying to stay out of the major flow. Right. Not wanting to expel a lot of energy to be where they are. And we're out here trying to figure out exactly where that spot is. Getting a pretty long drift out of that. That's oh not yeah, bad. no, for sure. It's not bad. Sure. It's good technique. I like that. Oh, you've not done this before? Not, not this quite. I, I usually, I'll position my, myself downstream and bring it back to him. Oh, oh. That was a fish. That was a fish. That was a fish. See it shoot up? I saw the flash, Bill. Yeah. See, but the the, the indicators start going upstream. Yeah. We're uh, definitely dealing with some uh, cold water conditions today. So when I talked to Bill first thing this morning, I had mentioned to him that uh, we needed to go down in our sizes of flies and our choices of flies. You know, basically in this, these cold conditions where these fish are laying really deep in the pools, we're gonna have to get right into the smaller egg patterns, you know, the Michigan wiggler type nymphs, real tiny little nymphs and stuff, little prince nymphs, stone flies. This is a little pink, uh, pink San Juan worm. Obviously different egg patterns of different sizes and colors, but we're going to stay more with the subdued colors as well, kind of like the light pinks, and you can see in here kind of the light orange colors. And also the, uh, the little copper jaw nymph is a really good nymph of choice for cold water steelhead fishing. So basically, if you stick to the natural and you stay really deep in the holes with a good presentation, really slow, real deep, that's what's going to produce for us today. I'm getting a reading of about 31.3. So we're right on the freezing mark. Right on the freezing mark. Right. So, pretty cool. So really good indicator that the fish are going to be lethargic. Yeah. 
Yeah. Have you seen these new little digital? Aren't loaders? they neat? They're aren't fantastic. They neat? Man, you don't have to get wet or nothing. A little infrared, yeah, no yeah. more dipping your fingers in the cold water. Right? Just a great little tool. Yeah. You know, might not be 100% accurate, but I'll tell you, it's awful close. And it's pretty close, and so, it'll give you an idea of what's happening anyway. And so. you know what? If it's a fraction of a degree that you're looking at, it's not going to make any difference no, anyway. No, that, that's so, for sure, yeah. you know, so just point it and point it, hold the button down. Now this is just giving there you a surface go. temperature. Surface but, temperature. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in a, in, a, in a river that's this turbulent, and a lot of people argue the point that the bottom temperature is different than the surface temperature. You know what? This river is turbulent. Look up here. Right? You've got all the water coming through, about 12 inches of water dropping into this pool, and this pool is flushing fast. The water temperature difference between the top and the bottom is minimal. Minimal. You know, yeah. like yeah. one one thousandth of a degree. Yeah. That's all it'll yeah. ever be, which is absolutely, you know, yeah. non-existent type thing. It's not going to have any different effect on the fish at all. So, But it's a, it's a really good reading for us. gives us a little bit better idea of how the Means fish are going to... Now we have to slow our presentation. Oh, absolutely. You know that. Absolutely. You have to slow it. If the water come up to 40 degrees, let's say, Fish would become a little more active. Then we could get into a little bigger, bigger presentation, a little more aggressive with them. Oh yeah, you can yeah. swing flies. Swing you know, flies. Fish will, fish will chase a fly. But this tells me that we got a dead drift and put a, the fly right in front of them. Yeah. So one thing you always want to keep in mind: steelhead are cold-blooded. Right. Right. All fish are cold-blooded. But if there's a temperature drop of any more than three or four degrees, it puts them right off, and it's going to take them two or three days to re-metabolize to the new temperature. right now with it being this cold. After eating, John and I decided to find another spot where he thought the fish would be more active. He said the Beaver River wasn't far away. Fish on, John. Good stuff. Yes, sir. Well, this one's a little, little bit livelier. Oh, yeah. Exactly where John told me it would be laying. In that run in there. Oh, and he let go. That's just too bad but he was exactly where John told me he was gonna be. In this run, it funnels down. The fish was right on the edge of the seam where the two currents meet. That was good, that was good. It's okay, we don't get them all the time. Good shot, Bill. Good, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not about numbers in the winter like now. Uh, cold weather fly fishing is definitely not about numbers, oh, but no. it's about quality. You have to change up your tactics all the time. You have to change your lead, you have to change your flies. It's a matter of keep being, uh, variable and you will be successful. That's quality experience, Bill. Quality experience, that's <laughs> exactly. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Quick release. Well, that's okay. You don't catch them all. That's no, just the way it is. You just don't catch one. them all. Yeah, well, we're going to do that, yep. Whammo. Good stuff. Bud. Such a light. And it was laying right in that seam. In it? that seam, but it was just a little hesitation of the indicator. It didn't go under, just hesitated. And I set the hook and he was there. Perfect. We'll do it again, Bill. Yeah, for sure. Now the beauty of Gray County is, you have rivers very close together. We were first on the Big Head River in Meaford, and we were hitting some bad conditions. The water was icing over pretty quick, having a lot of con uh, control problems with the ice on our lines. So John suggested we hop in the truck, go eight miles down the river, down the road I should say, to the Beaver River. And as soon as we got here, I was five minutes and I got that fish you just seen. This is the nice thing about Gray County, lots of rivers close together. There's our difference, why the fishing improved eight miles down the road. We we're into 31 degree temperatures in Meaford, and here we got 33.9 it looks like, or 32.9. That's a whole degree and a half difference between here and Meaford, which is nine miles away. 
So there's the difference and why the fish turned on here. And we're not having the ice problems that we heard were before. So you must be versatile and choose to move if you need to. Don't stay in one spot. Now, John, for the folks at home, we're in a different river. Now we're nymphing it different. Uh, uh, we're not staying above it like we were over in Meaford. Can you give us a reason why that we're doing it this way? Well, Bill, in Meaford, we, we had an approach where the water was clear, it's very low, mm -hmm. and those fish are laying in those pools, but the pools aren't that deep. Right. Whereas, look at this. This is a big, dark hole. Yeah, right? it's quite deep, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we're running five to six feet of line underneath the strike indicator right. here. Yeah. These fish are down deep and a lot of protection here, big boulders, big rocks, and where they're going to structure is in the slow current seams back and behind those rocks and boulders, but down deep, lots of cover. So in Meaford, we were staying back to be out of their line of sight. Right. Right. In here, that's not an issue. That's not an issue here. Okay. The, they're not, they're not going to see us. We're back, we're on shore. Right. We're not getting in the water with them. So in Meaford, where we were actually working the pool down here, staying completely away from the fish, here, the fish are right here in front of us, but the visibility factor is not an issue. They're down deep. Their light refraction or their, their sight refraction is not that great. They can't see us up here. So basically our presentation here, just a little cast upstream, lift your rod high. It's like a high stick yeah. method of nymphing and just let it run down deep through the pools and just cover the bottom. That's all we want to do. Beautiful. There's your drift right there. Come on, go on down, go on down, go on down. There we go, fish on, good fish. Oh yeah, good fish, good fish, good fish, yeah. We're on light tippets, eh, John? Light tippets, buddy. Take your time. Yep. Nice oh, fish, Oh, look at the though. colors. Yeah, nice buck, it's a nice it's male. It's a big buck. Now he's gonna go for a run, and I'm letting him. I'm letting him go for a run. Just play him really cool. Okay, I'm gonna let him tire himself out. Any coaching will be welcome, John. Billy, <clears throat> the most important thing when you're fighting a big fish is just to maintain, that's it, your low rod. That way you keep the fish down deeper in the pools. Right. So, so you're fighting them in the slower water underneath. Okay, especially these cold water <clears throat> winter fish like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's absolutely imperative. And the other thing, you've got that nice fighting butt on that rod. Put that right up underneath your forearm. Right. And always maintain the pressure him. on about a 45 degree angle off your there chest. He is. This is exciting, John. That's a good fish, bud. Yeah. It's not about numbers at this time of year. It's about quality fish. I have a very nice buck here. Watch the boulders. Yeah, I seen that. He just created. Got to keep his head up. Well, we get that fish ready to land. I'm going to let you bring him to me, okay? Okay. You coach me on any way you want me yeah. to do it, I'll do it. This water's extremely cold. Makes him that much more vibrant. <laughs> He's really shaking his head hard. Well, this is what you've been working all morning for, Bill. Yes, yes. Persistence pays off. Yeah, we got that little bit of cloud cover. If you notice, the light's a little bit darker now. Right, yeah. Yeah, so that just might have triggered him up a little bit, right? Oh, look at him shake his head, beauty. some head shaking. Now we got seven pound tippet, but I'm not gonna allow them. I'm, I'm gonna play them like a safe cracker. Real beautiful, easy. beautiful colors. This one is all oh, dressed right out, beautiful. A lot of ice around here right now. The temperature dropped like a stone last night. Now bring your rod down low to the side, Bill, and back towards me, that's back it. Back towards you? Yep. So you work them into the shallows. Okay. Now he's not gonna like it when he gets this feels This is a those... big fish. This is a very big fish. Watch your rod tip in the trees. Yep. Now back over towards me a little bit. I want a good headshot out of with the net, okay, Bill? Just like that. Perfect. That was an excellent land. That was Congratulations, so my friend. Cool, my friend. Oh, look at him. Look at the colors. Look at the colors, how bright it is. He's dressed right out. Now you notice, Bill, the one thing, and not a lot of people talk about this. Like, See the importance of the net. Exactly. When you, how many times have you ever handled a fish where you fumble it, fumble it because you didn't have a net with you? Right. Let it slide. These fish are very slimy. Yeah. Steelhead, right? We want to release this fish unharmed. 
And if you notice, I have yet to lift his weight out of the water. That's right. Okay, so I have the absolute control. So the arguments for and against use of nets, this is the only way to handle it. Absolutely, I agree with you. <laughs> that was wonderful. Oh. <laughs> you got to have cold hands, buddy. I'm telling you, you're a better man than me sticking them in that water. <laughs> For more information on today's show and others in our series, visit us on the net at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>